Hey everyone, I'm Dr. Clark here on The Place for Answers. I'm starting a new series called Autoimmune Diseases That Affect Women. And what I'm going to be doing is going through an A to Z kind of list of these and explaining what to look for, what's the kind of characteristics, and what you, what you should do to try to help yourself to deal with these things. The first one we're going to start with today is alopecia areata. Now what that is, that's a condition in which the immune system kills the follicles of the hair cell. So clearly what you find is women who are losing their hair. Now, the kind of confusing thing about hair loss in women is hair loss in women can actually be caused by several different things. So there's alopecia areata, right? That's one of the autoimmune, uh, that's an autoimmune cause. The second thing is you find hair loss in hypothyroidism, okay? So hair loss is one of the classical signs of hypothyroidism. Now, the most common cause of hypothyroid is Hashimoto's, which is an autoimmune condition. It's an autoimmune attack on the thyroid. A third cause of hair loss is um, elevated testosterone, and DHT, which we can go in some other time. There's also some information to show that ferritin has some relationship with hair loss. So what do you do about it, right? Well, what usually happens is that you go to the doctor and they say, well, it's no big deal, you just kind of have to get over your vanity, and you're going to have to move on and uh, maybe get a wig. Not a lot we can do about it. And that's really not true, and I think that's actually fairly uh, insulting to tell somebody that because... Uh, you know, your appearance is you, and to start having big patches of hair loss, I mean, it's, it's silly to think that someone wouldn't be affected by that. The reason the doctor tells you to kind of get on with your life and live with it is because they don't have anything to offer you. What I will tell you is, if you've got alopecia areata, you got an autoimmune condition, and there's a very specific set of rules that we now have to follow in order to help that, number one, not advance further. This is the danger with any autoimmune condition. Normally, your immune system tolerates you. Okay? You don't always attack your own tissue. That's called self-tolerance. Now, when, you, when your immune system attacks, for example, the hair follicle, which it's not supposed to do, self-tolerance is broken. That now means, and I want you to listen up, that now means that your immune system can attack and start destroying any other tissue in your body. It could be your thyroid. It could be nerve tissue. It could be your cerebellum. It could be your pancreas. It could be anything. So what usually happens, if someone's really careful and does the detective work, someone with alopecia areata usually ends up at some point in their life with another autoimmune condition. Could be vitiligo, could be something that uh, goes und undiagnosed for years. Now I will tell you that there are things you can do. If you go to the right doctor who understands how to approach autoimmunity from a functional perspective, there are things you can do. Because what's happening in autoimmune disease? Well, what's happening is your immune system is unbalanced. Let me give you the short course. About, take about 20 seconds. Your immune system has kind of got two divisions. There's a Th1 and then there's a Th2. The Th1 division is like the SWAT team. It's T cells. They're the ones that actually go in and normally kill things that are invaders like viruses and bacteria, cancer cells. Well, Th2 are your B cells. B cells make antibodies. They make antibodies that direct the SWAT team to the invaders. So in an autoimmune situation, this isn't balanced anymore. It's skewed either this way or this way. So the SWAT team's killing things it shouldn't kill, or the B, cell, B cells are directing the SWAT team to kill things they shouldn't kill. In alopecia areata, what's happening is the immune system, the SWAT team, and the, the B cells are targeting the hair follicles, killing them, and then your hair falls out. Now that is an unbalanced immune system. What you've got to do to help this, you've got to calm down this autoimmune expression and try to balance the immune system. And that's a, way too complicated to go into, but I will tell you that you have to look at very specific things. You've got to look at a bunch of things. In fact, the doctor that you see has got to be kind of a health detective. They've got to look for you know, triggering factors. They've got to look for vitamin deficiency. They have to look for uh, GI factors. They've got to look for, there's a lot of stuff you have to look at. So it gets kind of complicated. There's a lot of moving parts. But what I want you to walk away with if you're watching this is if you've got a history of alopecia areata, you need to be concerned about your immune system having gone on and attacked something else. And the second thing I want you to know is if you've got alopecia areata, there is help. Now, I'm not saying your hair can grow back because once you kill a hair follicle, um, it can't necessarily regenerate, you understand. But the biggest concern is preventing that from spreading into other tissues. So, for example, you don't want to get Hashimoto's thyroiditis. You don't want to get autoimmune diabetes. Uh, you certainly don't want to get a demyelinating condition where you start getting neuropathies and things like that. So I think you understand. So that's condition A, alopecia areata. And there is hope, but you've got to find somebody who understands what to do.